Hey guys, welcome back to Sockets and Sideburns. So this video is part two of the rocker cover saga and we'll be picking straight back up where we left off in the last video, removing the rocker cover. So the first thing we're going to be doing is fitting the new gaskets to the rocker cover and the inlet manifold as well. Well, we're fitting all of them except for the spark plug seals. We'll get to that. Now for all the parts we need, which is going to be a rocker cover gasket, spark plug tube seals for the rocker cover, and inlet manifold seals. I actually have all of the original Renault part numbers for these, which I'll put up on the screen now to help you guys source yours. I got the part numbers from a very helpful parts guy at Renault, who you're gonna hear more about in the next video, but I'll put links to all the parts I use, these parts in the description. So I'm gonna start with the rocker cover gasket. Now this just pushes in to the recess on the rocker cover and you can see on it that it's got little locating tabs all along that are then fitting into places on the rocker cover so you really can't go wrong with where it's going and I'm going to start with the camshaft bearing cap end that's going up around here this like half moon bit and then I'm going to work my way around from there just make sure that it's pushed in all the way as you go around and that you get all those little tabs properly engaged as well. Kind of helps to get it in all the way around first rough and then do a second pass, making sure that you're happy with the seating of the locating tabs. There we go. They should seat quite nicely down. That one on the over here was being a bit stubborn just then. Make sure you get them right down. That's that done. And like I say, leave your spark plug tube seals out for now. Inlet manifold next. Again, these ones just push straight in. They have got little tabs on them just to help them stay in place when we're fitting the actual inlet manifold later so that they don't just fall straight out and um, land somewhere down in the bay where we'll never see them ever again. So I'll just push these in. And when we talk these up, these will squidge down, make a good seal, find the place they want to be. Okay, with all those fitted, we can put the rocker cover back on. However, before we do, we need to put some beads of sealant on the cylinder head. I've got this WINS RTV sealant. I like to use this for ease of application. You can set your bead size with it, and it also comes out well as it's in a pressurized can. I'll leave a link for this down in the description. So with this, you just pull the little plastic tab here out. I may not be able to do it with my gloves on. Just find the nearest handy thing. So snap that tab off and then you pull your cap off. And then we're going to turn the top clockwise until we hear a click. And then keep turning and you'll see that the trigger will pop up like that and then we can turn the top to set from maximum to minimum max giving us a thicker bead size and min giving us a thinner bead this is why I like this stuff you just set your bead size 
angle your nozzle, and then pull the trigger. Thick. Or thin. Thinner. So for doing the bolt holes, you're going to want this set to the thinnest bead possible pretty much, just so this trigger is literally just lifted off the can. And then you can get a very thin bead around those bolt holes doing that. But then for the bearing caps, you're probably going to want to open it up just a smidge more, just so you can get a slightly thicker bead on there. Obviously thickness is also determined by how quick you're going to draw it across. Okay, so over at the cylinder head now, first thing just quick here is if you did dirty this back up doing valve clearances or anything else after you gave it your initial clean, just give it another quick wipe over with some brake clean or something like that now. Just this needs to be absolutely spotless before you're applying silicon. Okay, so Renault want a bead of sealant around the exhaust side bolt holes and on the bearing caps. Now, the pictures in the manuals are a little bit confusing on this issue, even Renault's own manual. Firstly, they want sealant on the bearing caps, caps, plural. Now, as you can see here, we've only got one bearing cap on this head, not the one on the other end, which is on the 712s, I believe. Now, this here, right here that you can see here, this is actually part of the camshaft itself and rotates. Now, I wouldn't want anyone to mistakenly put sealant on there and have it then rotate down into the engine. There is no bearing cap on this head on the 722. This is the actual camshaft itself. We just want to put some on here and on the exhaust bolt holes as well. Also, Renault say exhaust side bolt holes, but then they only show five of them, when of course there are six. But actually, there are just five exhaust bolt holes. But this one here is actually a recess for the lug on the rocker cover to go into. What they show you is, to put silicon around this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one, and the lug as well. Now the reason I believe they want silicon around these exhaust holes is if you look at the rocker cover itself, these are actually located inside the gasket area. So of course, if oil gets up here, they are gonna leak. It's gonna get straight up the bolts and straight out. That's why we're siliconing these. This one does not need any silicon because it is actually located outside of the gasket area. So if oil manages to get out here, no amount of silicon around that bolt hole is going to stop it anyway because it's already bypassed the gasket. Now the same goes for where mine was leaking in the first place. That's not going to be anything to do with the silicon's fault. That's going to be all down to the gasket failing to seal around here. So I wouldn't really recommend, I mean it's up to you at the end of the day, but I am certainly not going to be applying any extra silicon. And when it comes to this, the hole for the lug here, I did not actually remove any silicon from here. When I, if you have a look at my rocker cover removal video, I didn't actually remove any silicon from around here. So although it may say it in the manuals, fresh from the factory, this did not have any silicon around that lug hole there. It just had it around these one, two, three, four exhaust bolt holes. Okay, I'm gonna start with the four exhaust side bolt holes. I've got it set to the minimum bead size and I'll just be a little standoff from the cylinder head a tinsy bit just so I don't drag the nozzle back through it.
Okay, so we'll start from about halfway up on here, about there, and then we'll just dwell here for a second just to get a splodge in there and then come back past this bolt hole here. And then we need to do the same on the other side. Probably won't be able to see this very well on camera. Okay, I've changed my mind. I am actually going to put silicon around this lug locating hole here. It does show to put it on in the Clio 2 manual, Clio 3 manual, and even Renault's own manual as well. Now, it may not have been here when I removed the rocker cover. It may not be put on in the factory. It may not make sense to put it on there, but considering that people may well use this video as a guide and that, um, Reno recommend it. I am going to put some on there as well. Now, as I said, this is the places that Reno recommend that you're going to put it. A lot of people I've seen, they'll plaster this whole backside with silicon. They'll come all up around the sides. That will make a mess. It may cure oil leaks. It may not. But this is where Reno recommend you put the silicon. Right, with the silicon in place, we can refit the rocker cover now. Just need to persuade it past the engine mount and then try and line it up best we can before we drop it down. We want to drop it down evenly so our silicon doesn't smudge and make sure it's mated up all the way around. So it is difficult to refit with the spark seals in place. Notice I said difficult, not impossible. Actually, I recorded a clip earlier to show you. So the way to get these covers back on with the spark seals in place is drop the cam belt end down behind the engine mount here, get it into that slot and then try and keep as far forward as you can and you'll feel it slot in and then with your right hand sort of draw over a bit and you'll just feel like a, it'll suddenly move over and there you have it, you can see you're lined up with your spark plug tubes and then you can just drop it into place like that. So as you can see, difficult, but not impossible, but it will make it very difficult to lay it down square on so you don't smear your silicon beads. That's why I highly recommend getting some new spark seals, popping out the old ones and refitting like this without them in because it gives you so much more room, then we'll put them in after. Okay, so check your gaskets fitted down properly one final time. Make sure there's no wiring or anything like that that's gonna get pinched between the rocker cover and the top of the head. Come over to your engine mount side, get that started first, then come over. Remember you've got that lug at the back, try and keep as even as you can, straight down. Make sure we're all contacted all the way around. Okay, and then we're gonna drop our bolts in and get them started in a second. Okay, and then I'm just going to start running these down. Now I'm going in the tightening sequence, just for hand tight, which I'll put back up on the screen now for you. And we're just basically going one, two, three, just until they start to contact and then a bit more on. Four straight in front of three. Five. Six. Seven. 
seven, these two longer ones. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Make sure you're longer, you'll have two longer bolts. And they're going in the two cam belt end holes. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, 12. Right, now I'm gonna torque them all the way down. I found two torque values for these. I've got 10 Nm and 12 Nm. Not really much in it to be honest, and I pretty much guarantee if you did it by hand just with a ratchet, you'd overshoot 12 Nm anyway. So I'm just gonna do 12 Nm. Again, do these in sequence, which I'll put back up on the screen again. Might just actually be easier to run these in with a ratchet until they're down a bit tighter than that. We're gonna be there for a while. It's getting close. I'll wait till I feel them just start to talk up a bit. And then I'll come back with the torque wrench. There's number 12. There you are. Okay, 12 Nm, as I said. Starting with number one then. Point nine. Number three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight. And 12. 12 is like my nemesis. It's twice it's got me. Right, so that's them all talked down. That should be that uh, rocker cover gasket nicely squidged down and the silicon bead should all be squidged down as well. Right, we'll fit the spark plug seals in next and then everything from then on will basically just be the reverse of how we took it apart. Right, we'll put our new spark seals in now. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna tape over the hole where the oil filler 
neck goes in the rocker cover. Absolutely do not want anything falling down inside here now. Okay, these spark seals, they just press in from the top. Now you might find, if they're a little bit tight, you might want some uh, silicon lubricant type spray. Spray it around on the inside there, but I think they're gonna actually be quite loose actually. And we're just gonna ease them over the spark tube and then push them in around the edge until they bottom down. You wanna get down low, have a good look. And then what you can do is get a, I think 32 mil socket, I'll check in a second. And that will go around the outer ring nicely and you can give them a good push down home. Obviously you don't wanna put a hammer on or anything because this is a plastic rocker cover. But just give it, you can give it a better push like that rather than just with your fingers and thumbs. Right, let's see, that's a uh, 32. That looks a bit big actually. Try a 30. Yeah, I think a 30 is more, more of a comfortable fit. So with a 30, and then you can give it a good push down, even all the way around that way, applying pressure to the whole thing. That's them done. So now, like I said, we're just basically doing everything in reverse, starting with the wiring harness at the back. Clip the wiring harness around the back of the rocker cover back on. It just literally pushes back into the brackets. Not forgetting, of course, our little extension to the throttle body. Just push it back on, push the ring on the cable tie back on until the prongs are through much easier to get on than it was to get off. Refit the coil pack back on next. Only goes on the one way. Run your four T30s back in. And just a pinch up with the three eighths is all these really need. And then just stick your HT leads back up on the scuttle again, so they're out of the way for now. Put the PCV T-piece back on. Now, if you've used my um, PCV cleaning video, make sure you've got this all assembled back up correctly. It just goes onto that stub on the rocker cover. Keep these two rotated back, so they're out of the way for now. Inlet manifold back on next. Right, the Renault manual calls for a little Loctite on these eight bolts, the 10 mils that were holding the inlet manifold into the cylinder head. You don't need any on the E8 Torx that were going in the top holding it to the rocker cover. Now I cleaned all the old Loctite off and I will be using Loctite 243 to replace it. I'll leave a link for this stuff in the description. And all we really want on these is just a small dab on the ends, you don't want to use too much because this stuff is not cheap. Just a small dob like that and then when you wind this in it will just take it all the way up the threads with it. Right that's one down, seven left to go.
Right, before you offer the inlet manifold down onto the engine, for the love of all that is holy, make sure you remove whatever you plug the inlet ports with, if you plug them with anything at all. It will take more than a smile <laughs> to get these back out if they get ingested. Right, the inlet manifold gaskets are a pretty tight fit in there, so they shouldn't go anywhere as we offer this down. However, we're gonna keep a close eye. Make sure all of our wiring's out the way. We don't want anything to get pinched between the two. And then I'm gonna come down at the front and you can see quite well through as you offer it down. So you should be okay. Get it lined up with your bolt holes. Might just need to give it a squidge left and right, but it should find where it wants to be relatively well. Okay, now we need to tighten these eight, 10 mils that are holding the inlet manifold to the cylinder head in what is rather an interesting tightening sequence. So we're just gonna follow the order of tightening, which I'll put back up on the screen again now. The first stage is to just run all the bolts in hand tight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hand tight. So just with your fingers in an extension. And what I'm gonna do as I get them started, this, these top ones are not the, not the easiest. And I'm just gonna backtrack until I feel the click. So I know I'm not cross-threading. Just with your fingers on your extension. Right, number two, immediately below number one there. Number three. Number four above that one. These are the somewhat more difficult ones. Because they're very difficult to see what you're doing. Number five, another one of the difficult ones. Six beneath that. Seven on the far left. Lastly, number eight. Okay, now we tighten bolts four and five to six NM. And number five as well. And now we loosen off four and five until they're slack.
And now we tighten them all up to 10 nm in the tightening sequence order. Like I said, a rather interesting sequence. I believe it's so that they can be sure that the inlet manifold is pulled on evenly down onto the cylinder head there so the gaskets seat nicely. Right, bolt number one first, 10 nm. Number two. Nine point nine. Just a smidge more for me. Ten point three. Number three. Five. We keep stopping at 9.9 .9 and I think that's a little too little talk. I'd rather go past 10. Six. Seven. And finally, number eight. Nine point nine again. Let's just go past. There we go. Ten point three. And then lastly, the three E eight torques holding the inlet manifold to the rocker cover. Just drop them in here, here, and here. Drop them in. Now some manuals will have you tighten these to 8 nm, some to 10. The Renault manual has them at 8 though, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Perhaps do them across from each other. Right, that's the inlet manifold back on.
Now we need to slide the starter motor supply cable back on, which also acts as kind of a bracket for the wiring loom as well. So we'll just slide this back onto the stud on the starter motor. Make sure it's going all the way back if you can. There's kind of an area for it to push up against here and it slides back on that. Bottom it right out on the stud. And then we'll fit our nut back on. And then we'll give that a pinch up, 13 mil. A ratchet and spanner would be nice in here, but there really isn't the clearance around the nut, I'm afraid. And just a pinch. Dipstick now. Pull the tape off that you put on there to plug it. And then slide it back into the tube and make sure that you clip it back into the inlet manifold here. Now to refit sensors and wiring plugs. You can do this in any order, but I'm gonna go back anti-clockwise, starting with the intake air temperature sensor. So just put your plug back on. Push it all the way down until there's two little tabs. Make sure they've poked through, and then you can refit your clip on. Once it's in the guides, you just push it forward. Make sure it doesn't get away from you and then just give it a quick tug to make sure it is secure. Now I did get a comment on the last video from Yeah Good saying you actually don't need to pull this clip out and you can just push it in and then it bounces back. Right, let's give that a whirl. So pushing in here, there is actually a recess for your finger. Look at that, I didn't even notice that before. Push in and oh, look at that. You learn something new every time, every time. And then to refit, you wouldn't have removed that wire clip and to refit, push in again, make sure the tabs go in, release, and it just acts like it's spring-loaded, exactly like he said. Thanks for that. Okay, injector wiring plug next. Bring it back left side of the engine lifting bracket, and then just push it in carefully until you hear the click. And then just to pull on the plug itself, make sure it's engaged, that tabs in. Around the back of the engine, throttle body wiring plug next. And with this one, you've got to press the button on the plug in order to clear the tab as you're pushing it back on. Get it on there, press that button in, and slide forward. You should hear a nice click, and then just give it a little push back, make sure it's secure. Coil pack wiring plug, grab that, take it round the map sensor plug should be behind that and then again push it in listen for the click map sensor support the sensor it is a push fit as i mentioned on the removal video and again just in until that locating hook has gone past the tab okay now the ht leads Bring them around the PCV pipe. They go into the left side of that and under it. Now, before I refit these, I always put a little silicon dielectric grease on the boots. Stops them sticking to the spark plugs, which these are notorious for. I'll leave a link to where you can get some in the description. Now, just remember that cylinder one is at the flywheel end of the engine. I don't need to put any silicon grease on these today as it wasn't that long ago that I did the ignition coil 
video and they've not been on and off many times since then and there's still plenty down inside there. Right, we'll grab each lead, which we should have numbered earlier so that we can be sure we're going in the right place. Make sure we get the wires in line ready. So using the tape that you'd have put on earlier, number one, and all we're gonna do, put the tube down inside, push down on the plastic tube until you hear a click. And then once that's in, we can clip all the wires in place along three points here, here, and at the back as well. And then carry on along, two, three, four. Right, pipes next. Start with the ones that go on the back of the inlet manifold. Fuel vapor pipe first. Grab it from wherever you tucked it out the way earlier. And then it's got a clip into the inlet manifold here. There are two raised sections on the pipe itself that you can see, and they go between that little bracket so that it can't move left and right. And then we'll clip it back onto the stub on the inlet manifold. Now be careful with this one. It just pushes on, but it almost has like a false position. So make sure you hear a good loud click and then give it a pull when you're finished. So we push it on. And there you go, you heard a good loud click there. And when we pull it, it's not coming off. But if you push it on slowly, you might feel a click ahead of that and you might be tricked into thinking that's it. But if you give it a good pull and it doesn't come off, you're in. Brake vacuum pipe next. And that needs to go behind the PCV pipes and over the top of them, but under the fuel vapor pipe. And that again, just pushes in until you hear it click. And then lastly, the PCV pipe that goes onto the inlet manifold. Just rotate that forwards. And it just pushes on. And then this PCV pipe should have tucked it under in the first place before I started putting the other pipes on. But just run that under the fuel vapor pipe and tuck it in that keeper there. Fuel supply pipe next, grab it from the strut tower or wherever you put it. It goes under the fuel vapor pipe like that. And then you clip it onto the rocker cover into the bracket for it there. And then unlike removal, this just simply pushes back on. Firstly, you're gonna to wanna to remove the bungs that you fitted. You might need a pair of pliers to make it easier to remove the one in the pipe itself. And then grab the one out the fuel rail as well. And then push it onto the stub on the fuel rail until you hear it click. And then a quick pull just to make sure it's secure. Oil filler neck next. Take this tape off. Not a whole lot of access left in there, so. A pair of pliers. And then all we need to do, take our bolt out, check the seal, just a big O-ring. Push it in. Slides in nice. Line up with our bolt hole. Drop it in. 10 mil. Pinch that up. And then we need to clip the fuel supply pipe back onto the side there. Air box next, sit it up on the battery, reach down wherever you put your air intake hose and reattach it. Just clips back on, just push it and you'll hear those clips re-engage. And then 
Rotate it over towards the engine. Move this PCV pipe over a bit. It's going to be in our way. Make sure that the gasket for the throttle body is in here. And then rotate it over. Get the throttle body in first. Wiggle that. Then line it up with the mounts on the engine. Give it a good push down. Then tighten up this Jubilee clip. Make sure that the cutout in the clip goes over the tab on the airbox. Seven mil, run that down. And then slide your PCV pipe back onto the stub, clip it in. Reconnect the battery now, grab your negative cable from wherever you put it, back onto the post. And then it's an eight mil. Quick tug, make sure it's secure. Okay, now we can start the car up. Just give the engine bay a final check over before you do, looking for any tools or any rags that we might have forgotten down in there. And remember to give the sealant that you used on the cylinder head for the rocker cover, as long as it needs to cure before you do start the car. Uh, in the case of the stuff that I've used, that's 24 hours. Now, after disconnecting the fuel lines as we have, the first place we're gonna wanna come to after we've restarted the car is here where the fuel supply pipe goes into the fuel rail just to check that there aren't any ridiculous leaks out of here. We'll just operate the ignition a few times over, try and primer up with some fuel again. Right, I think that's enough now. Just be aware that it might run a little rough just because of the fuel getting back through to the rail in the injectors. And also because we've disconnected the battery, the ECU will have to relearn the adaptive values. It's alive. Okay, and if you remember, like I said, get your eyes on that fuel connector down there. Make sure you haven't got, at the very least, fuel pouring out. You don't want any fuel, obviously. I can't see anything right now. We'll give it another check in a minute. Make sure there's not a drip or any moisture at all. Sounding pretty good, all things considered. Now I'll just let her idle for a few minutes. Right, I think that'll do us until we get a chance to take her on a proper run, save the planet and all that. Final check on this fuel connector, bone dry, no leaking whatsoever, perfect. Right, we'll just drop the bonnet and that's the job done. Okay guys, now don't forget, after disconnecting the battery, you'll have to input your radio code. Be sure to go and check out my video for that if you need any help with it. I'll put a card up on the screen for it now. And also, don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this Rocker Cover Saga series, valve clearance adjustment and PCV cleaning. I'll put a card for the playlist up on the screen now for that as well. If you've enjoyed this video or it's helped you out at all, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos from the channel in the future, then don't forget to subscribe. And you can find me over on Instagram, at Sockets and Sideburns. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.